Okay then my friends, so in the last lesson we set up a Firestore listener which sends us a snapshot every time data changes in the requests collection in our database. So now we need a nice way of keeping our UI, what reviews we show to the user, in sync with that data every time we get an update. And to do that we're going to use a view component. So this is not going to be an extensive view tutorial. I am going to keep it as simple as possible. But if at any point you want to learn more about Vue.js, then definitely check out my Vue courses. I've got an extensive course on Vue.js on Udemy, so the link to that will be down below. And also I do have a free one on YouTube as well, so I'll leave that link down below as well. So what is Vue? Well, basically, Vue is a JavaScript framework for managing data-driven user interfaces and website templates. And it's basically just a tool that allows us to easily keep our UI in sync with our data. So let's set this up. The first thing we need is a link to the Vue library. So I'm going to go to the Vue docs right here, and I'm going to grab this link right here. This is a CDN. So now if we go to the index file, I'm going to paste it at the bottom. Let me just do a comment first of all, and I'm going to say Vue.js, and underneath that I'm going to paste in that CDN. So now we can use Vue.js in this project. Now the next step is to create a Vue instance, and the Vue instance will then be given control over a certain section of our HTML template, and we can use it to update the UI whenever data changes. So we're going to create that view instance inside this requests file right here. So let me go back over to the docs and let's see how we set up a new view instance. Well, we do it like this right here. So I'm just going to grab hold of this, copy it, and I'm going to paste it up here. So we're creating a new view instance by saying new view, and then inside we pass in an object which represents this view instance. Now you're going to see two properties. First of all, this element property, and that tells view what element inside our HTML document we want this instance to control. Now, at the minute, it's looking for an element with an ID of app, and that doesn't exist inside our HTML content at the minute. So what I'm going to do is give this section right here where we output the different requests inside this list, I'm going to give that an ID equal to app. So now, Vue.js is going to be given control over this section of content, this part of the document, because that's the element we provide right here. The next property is the data property. And at the minute inside that object, it's just one property, message, hello view. So this data property allows us to store data for this view instance and anything inside this data we can output inside the app now. So if I wanted to, let me just save this for a second. If I wanted to now go over to index, I could output that data somewhere inside this view instance. So let me underneath the H1 for now just say P. And then if I want to output some data using view, I can do that now using curly braces, double curly braces, then the data that I want. And the property that we currently have on there is called message. So I can access that just by saying message. So Vue.js now is going to look at this and say, OK, I'm controlling the app and I know that I can output data inside this section of code. Therefore, when I see these curly braces, I'm going to look for this message property on the data object. I find it, I get that value and I output it right here inside the paragraph tag. So if I was to save this now and come over here, then it should work, but it probably won't. No, it does. OK, hello view. That works. Awesome. So now instead of just outputting this, what we want to do is output the data we get back from the database. So first of all, instead of this message, I want to store something a bit more useful, and that is going to be a property called requests. So much like down here, we have requests, which starts out as an empty array. We're doing the same thing for our view instance. That's the initial value of this data. Now, we also need to, inside our view instance, listen for changes to data. So this kind of logic is going to live inside our view instance. And we put it inside a mounted lifecycle hook. So this right here is a function that will fire when view mounts the DOM. Right, So when everything's ready and it's mounted the DOM and we're able to output data over here, at that point, this function will fire. 
And what we want to do is get this reference inside that function. And we also want to grab all of this stuff right here. So let's grab that and paste it down here. So when the mounted hook fires, first of all, we grab a reference to the collection. Then we're setting up the on snapshot method, which sends us a snapshot of the collection every time there's a data change. Now, we still want this because we're going to store requests locally inside this function before we update this data over here. So we'll keep that there. And underneath that, we're still cycling through all the snapshot documents and we're pushing items to this request variable. Then we can get rid of the log right here. We also don't want this stuff at the bottom where we output our own HTML because view is going to do that in a second. So let me get rid of that. But at the bottom, what we want to do now is take this and set it equal to whatever we have here, because this now at the bottom down here should be an array of all of the different data documents that we have. So I want to say that this request should now be equal to whatever this is. And the way we do that is by saying this dot requests and this refers to the view instance. And then we can grab the requests property from that view instance and then we set it equal to requests which is this thing right here so now we've updated the data on our view instance so we have that data and now we can use it inside our template over here and every time that data changes it's going to send us a new snapshot and update the data right here. And because the data updates over here, it's going to automatically reflect over here if we output that data. So now we have that data, let's work on outputting it into the template over here. So to begin with, what I'll do is add a directive to the li tag, and that is going to be v-4. And I'm going to set that equal to request in requests. So what am I doing here? Well, this directive allows us to cycle through data and output an LI tag for every bit of data. It's a bit like a for loop. So we're saying for every single bit of data inside the requests data right here, then I want you to output an LI tag. And inside the LI tag now, I have access to the single request object. Okay, so it does this for each request. And now inside this span, I could output the request text. So I could say, request.text like so and then down here I want the upvotes instead of 125 so I could say request dot upvotes like so and that is just about it for now so we're cycling through the data that we have access to and for each request we're outputting an li tag with this inside it so if I save it now and come over here and refresh. Hopefully this should all work. And we can see now we get all of the different documents from our Firestore database and we output that template for each one. We also get the real number of upvotes for each individual request document as well. So that's everything pretty much working now when it comes to outputting the data to the front end. And that was really easy using a simple Vue.js instance right here to do so, okay? Now, if we wanted to, we could have made a separate component for each individual request and output that separate component. But we're only using Vue for this small section. So I just used the Vue instance to manage everything directly. So now we're listing the data. We need to hook up the upvote functionality so that when a user clicks on one of these right here, it calls a cloud function to add one to the upvotes of that tutorial request. And we'll start that in the next lesson.